Hello, my name is Jay Bauer. I'm the Irrigation Soils Agronomist uh, here in Outlook with the Ministry of Agriculture, and I'm going to be presenting on a crop X soil moisture sensor that we're uh, doing a dot project with this year. So the crop X sensor measures uh, volumetric water content of the field. Uh, it's a also measures temperature and electrical conductivity, and then this all runs into their software where they use weather and and uh, a crop evapotranspiration model to forecast soil moisture um, about a about a week out. So you can use that information to help you schedule your irrigation. The sensors run off telemetry and with uh, through a cell tower and we've used it um, at the sort of north end of the SSRID and then also pretty close to Outlook here and we've uh, had a couple lapses in a few days of data but we've had pretty good success throughout the whole growing season. So we have this sensor set up in uh, two different fields where the producer is in managing one of the fields and then they're using the data and our recommendations to manage the other field. So in the software for the sensor, you can um, you can input very little data and just use the moisture as you sort of are reading it yourself, or you can add a lot of data in and, and uh, potentially get more value uh, out of their software. So you, you can set up different fields sort of within your, say pivot, you could set up multiple fields if you're doing variable rate irrigation or if you have uh, some soil variability in the field. Um, you can have, uh, you, you put in your soil information, so your soil texture information that you collect while you're out uh, installing the sensor and uh, then you put in crop information as well as your irrigation system specifications. Um, when you're in the field to install it, you so you, you charge the battery um, at the start of the season and then that's that'll that battery lasts the whole season uh, and then it comes with this uh, drill bit so you can drill you drill a pilot hole and then you screw the sensor in uh, and then sort of the sensors are are within the sort of screws the, the threads on the on the sensor there and there's one at eight inches and 18 inches so you screw that down as far as you can get it and then it comes with uh, this device to uh, get it the rest of the way So this is the the sort of overview page of the data on th on their software, and they have this uh, sort of very basic status of your field. So the the big raindrop is today's moisture. The small drain raindrop on the bottom is yesterday's, and then the uh, above droplet is uh, the forecasted soil moisture tomorrow and uh, you can sort of see here that it's got a forecast um, beyond what the data beyond today and uh, as you can see there, there's really not much drawdown because it's quite mild right now so this is from uh, a wheat one of the sensors in a, the wheat field that we were helping to schedule and in the start of the growing season, the moisture sensor, um, it, it, cal it sort of automatically calibrates through their, their software. Um, so as, as you keep adding more water, it, the, the software learns how much that soil can hold before it starts to, to drain out. So it'll automatically push your field capacity up as you as you add more moisture to the field. 
and then if you go beyond field capacity you would see some some large spikes above in the in the data line so th this is the eight inch sensor here and the 18 inch uh, stacked so you have your field capacity your fill point and your permanent wilting and your wilting point um, yeah so i'll go to the next graph type so this is the uh, profile sum graph so this tells you your uh, actual inches of moisture in this in the soil profile and as you i'll just go through this uh, irrigation season a bit sort of how we use this data so in june from a, the start from a june 8th to 24th the producer was just applying frequent low volume applications to main that maintain that soil surface moisture during the tillering stages and then at the boat the start of july that's when the crop was well established and we were getting lots of heat so there was uh, really high water use from the crop and a, a lot of evaporation so the the producer kept the moisture pretty close to field capacity because it was so hot and they didn't want to chance any uh, any stress any drought stress that or heat stress um, you can see here this e even here like they were irrigating every day and the, and the moisture was was decreasing that's when it was was really getting hot around this uh, so we were getting a day of where we were having highs of plus 35 plus 40 <laughs> and then it cooled off after that the producer let the moisture let the field dry down a bit to apply their fungicide application and then you know when once they got that applied it sort of heated up again into that plus 30 high plus 30 range and you know even even applying a third of an inch of moisture every day during this period the crop was still drying drying down water in the profile um, and then the uh, irrigation did eventually start to catch up and uh, and get the field fairly close to field capacity uh, and then it sort of cooled off there so they turned the irrigation off for about a week and then started irrigating again uh, once that once the once the soil dried down a bit and then near the end of the season here we were just kind of trying to time the uh, time when to stop irrigating so once they got it to about field capacity that was about the time where we started to see some signs of lodging in the field so they so so knowing that they're at field capacity and in this soil type it was a very fine sandy loam uh, they knew that knew we knew we had uh, two inches of uh, readily available water on and in, in the top two feet and then another two inches to wilting point so so the producer was confident that at this point they're better off to just stop irrigating uh, to prevent any lodging and they were confident that they had enough moisture to get the crop to ripen off and and these um so cost they do not have a canadian distributor at this time so you can't actually buy one uh, I'm imagining they're they're looking at uh, finding a distributor. Uh, they're, they said their wholesale price is about $700 for the sensor and then $275 per sensor per year for the data subscription. And uh, if they had a uh, provider that was buying a large amount of sensors, uh, about 300 sensors in an order, they would, uh, they would not be charging for the sensor, but they would charge the two hundred and seventy five dollars uh, per sensor per year.
So the takeaway is what it would be more useful for scheduling on a cool year because you could really uh, fill the soil up to field capacity, let it dry down to that uh, fill point and sort of reduce the amount of moisture in the field. But or the amount of moisture in the canopy to reduce uh, your uh, disease. Uh, but with such a hot, dry year, it just wasn't feasible. The, the irrigation could hardly keep up in July. Uh, it was still useful to prevent uh, over irrigation and to time that end of end of the irrigation season. Uh, the data was very accurate. We tested it against some uh, gravimetric uh, water samples in the growing season, and it uh, definitely would save a producer time not having to go out to the field to uh, probe the soil moisture. Sort of once they're comfortable with the data and they and they understand what they're how to read it. Um, and we did have a couple of producers use it under drip irrigation and they were finding it very valuable for uh, for their uh, their irrigation. So that's all I have. If anyone has any questions, uh, I am I'm here in the video conference, so I'll be happy to answer any of those. Thanks for your time.